Hey guys, what's up? And welcome to another replay analysis with me, Mr. Vibu. And today we are looking at a plat slash diamond level Protoss player, actually. Um, Good luck. Have fun. And we're gonna we're gonna see how it's going, dude. We're gonna see what's going on with Mr. Bonjoa, aka Ace Ring a Bell. Good luck. Have fun. Sounds good. All right, so it's a it's a Protoss versus Zerg. One of the biggest things you want to do against you know against the Zerg, obviously, is um, what you're doing already is decide where your first pylon is going to go. And putting a pylon in front of your natural obviously means that we're looking for a macro game. We want a natural to be going down, so it's simple and basic. Uh, that's very good. Also, I, I I do like your scout as well that you're going across the map right away. Um. Minor deviate, minor pickup already though. I like this a lot right after the first pylon. This is really good because it will give you very early knowledge as to <coughs> if the Zerg is going to go for a 12 pool or not, which is what you should really be worried about. Um, and also on top of that, if you really feel like being annoying and you see a drone come down here and you're able to block it, you totally can. Every Zerg fucking hates that. It's a good way to not only make a Zerg's build slower, but you also literally piss them off. Uh, if that if it works if your probe gets in the way because you throw their entire build out of order and they have to like now take a different expansion or they really delay their natural trying to get your probe out of the way um, anyways I like your probe scout but here's the problem though from now on in your build the second your pylon is started okay the next probe you built should be rallied down so uh, this is a better way to say this. The next probe that starts when the pylon starts, rally your nexus to your natural until that probe is done, and then re-rally your nexus to your mineral line. This way, you have minimal distance to walk with your probe, because if you rally your nexus up here, the probe literally spawns out of the top of the nexus, which means you don't have to make one of these probes on the mineral line walk further. Uh, it saves you a, a tiny bit of mining time. And mining time or in, the, in the early stages of the game is super important because it obviously sets the pace for how early you get everything, like your nexus, your gate, your core, your uh, your pylons, your gases. So what I would say is, this probe is almost done. This is too early. But this probe should be rallied down to your natural right now. It should just be rallied. That way it would be running down the ramp right now. And you could continue to make probes still my, sim uh, like, you know, simultaneously. Your probe would be like right here right now. Getting ready to run down the ramp. And to build a gateway. But you're you're going to have the situation now where... It's, it's not that long. It's not that delayed. But there is, uh, you know, a little bit of a delay here. You're taking the gateway. To be honest, he might even want to do it earlier than that. This map is actually a bit longer distance, and you are you are running to your natural. I'm gonna actually change what I said. You know what? I'm changing what I said, dude. What I think this is actually what I think now. When you have a this is the new answer for you. I'm sorry. Scratch what I just fucking said. It's actually still wrong. I just watched what I said, and it was still fucking suck. Because that you would instead of being like 250 minerals late, you'd still be like like 150 late or like 130. This is what you should do. The second you get a probe queued up, okay? Your money gets spent, your probe is queued up for 15, right? Like right now, you could make a probe, okay? The second you make this probe, and you have, it's about, it's about, you'll mine about 100 minerals. Uh, in the time it takes your probe to run to the natural. So, as soon as you have a probe in your nexus like this, and you get up to 50 minerals, okay? Th this should be your new build. 15 out of 15, 50 minerals in the bank. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just around 50 in the bank. Actually, just grab a probe and set it up there. It's awkwardly timed with the probing, because if you sent that probe that just built to the, to the thingy, it would be sitting up here for like three seconds doing nothing. And you don't really want probes just chilling for too long. It's actually better if you mine for those three seconds than have it sitting there. Like the trade-off would be send the probe up, have it sit there for three seconds, or have a probe ripped off your mineral line, which takes about one second or like one and a half seconds to cover the distance from like right here to there. 
and then it goes up. It's better if you do that. Um, like on, on maps where you're expanding at your natural. Um, what I said a second ago with like your next built probe going to the ramp, that would actually work if you're going to wall the main. But if you're going to wall the natural, it's further away. So, so yeah. If I'm confusing you, don't worry. I'm going to say it really simple right now. I'm just kind of like thinking about it. 15 out of 15 supply. Your pylon's already started. When you're at 50 minerals, grab a probe off your mineral line, preferably one closer to the ramp, and send it to your pylon so you can build a gateway. Because notice, when you do eventually grab a probe, your money is going to go up by about 100 before it gets there. Watch. So let's see when you grab a probe. You did it right now. So you have 180 minerals in the bank right now, okay? Now watch, you're going to have about 280 when you throw it on the gateway. Okay, you have a, 125 right now because you built the gateway, but if you subtract 150 off of this, you would have 275. So you get my point. It takes about, a, like you can mine about 100 minerals in the time it takes you to run from here to there. So at 15 out of 15 supply, and at 50 minerals, rip a probe off and go build this gateway because this gateway is honestly about six seconds late or seven seconds late. And things like this, it does massive, uh, it changes the build so much. Because now, if, you're, if, if your gateway is seven seconds late, your core is seven seconds late. Your, your tech beyond that is gonna be seven seconds late. Everything is gonna be late. And the later everything is, the less you're able to do against the Zerg if you do any in, in terms of like not only harassing the Zerg, but also defending what the Zerg is doing to you. Everything's going to be delayed and it's going to fuck you over really bad. Is the mining time worth more than the structure being on time? No. And here's why. The, the, like getting your. Here's the, the balance, okay? If you can maintain probe production, which you totally could. If you can maintain probe production, that's like a thumbs up right there. You're actually missing a probe too right now because uh, you're building the gateway. But the goal is, is I need to balance my build to where I can maintain making probes and also build my other buildings accordingly. That's the balance. That's like perfect balance. If you just, if you maintain pro production and you delay tech, it gets, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not really balanced anymore. It's way too heavy on the economy side for no reason. Like you're still maintaining pro production. And instead of actually using that money, you're just banking that money. So it's it's way too heavy on economy. There's no balance there. Uh, but yeah, um, just maintaining pro production is like your your goal, right? That's like your main goal. As long as you're not building too many things that make you stop building probes, that's your goal. So uh, yeah, that's the big that's a big one. And then looking at the nexus here for a second. At 49 seconds is your last probe that was built. And then we'll look at it too, right? Like after the probe is done for how many seconds goes by here. So you started a new one at 56 seconds. That's seven seconds, which is more than half the build time of a probe. And a lot of people, they don't think about it. Like I'm gonna try and explain it in a way that makes a lot of sense. But a lot of people think to themselves, it's not that big of a deal. Only one of my probes is delayed now by seven seconds, whatever. But in reality, your probe count right now is 16. And let's just let's just say hypothetically, you're gonna go to 44 probes, which is perfect two base saturation because 22 probes per base is perfect. So we'll say, cause it looks like you're gonna go for a natural, right? In, in a minute, 44 probes is going to be optimal saturation for you. What that means though is, is now every probe after 16, so probe 17, probe 18, probe 19, probe 20, probe 21, all the way to probe 44 are now all delayed by seven seconds. And if you think about it like this, one probe mines one mineral per second. All workers do. If they're optimally saturated, they mine about one mineral per second. So now every second that goes by, you have now, you've now effectively lost seven minerals because of the first probe being seven seconds late. But now you're going to lose on top of that 
seven. Um, you're still going to lose one mineral every second up to the first seven seconds. And then the second seven seconds, you're going to lose two minerals a second. The third seven seconds, you're going to lose three minerals per second. The fourth seven seconds, you're going to lose four minerals per second. Does that make sense? Because every probe is delayed now. So now every probe is... Uh, or it's, it's not ex exactly like that, because it's not like every probe is building seven seconds at a time. But you get my point. I'm what I'm trying to say. Like, if... It's a little more complicated than what I'm what I'm making it out to be, but every probe is delayed, so you're, that's money you're missing out on that oh, you'll never get back yeah. because you can't get time back. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it makes your build way fucked up, and it makes it way slower. So the the core number one thing that is the most important out of all things is this structure never stops building probes until you hit optimal saturation that you want to go for for your build. Yo, thank you for the sub, uh, Blue Jedi. Thank you, man. And then we have, uh, you know, your probe chilling here, too. This is not ideal, either. You want to definitely, like, build your gateway and then send it right back to mine. Because your probe could come back and mine your probes are under attack. minerals for, like, probably 20 seconds and then go out again, which is another 20 minerals you're missing out on. And 20 minerals, you know, th these things add up, right? 20 minerals might make or break the difference of like building your nexus on time or having to wait like another second which is again going to delay your probes again at your natural being built and stuff like that so what already what i can see that's going to help you a lot we'll talk about it more and more as this game goes on but already what i can see where that i'm going to something i'm going to do for you is i'm going to play a game i'm going to i'm going to see how you like to play first of all but i'm going to then play a game myself after uh, like a, just like a quick one by myself and I'm gonna give you like a checkpoint pace of something you can try to keep up with it'll be like a quota build for you we'll talk more about it later but I'll, I'll we'll do that after and it'll be something you can you can aim for and, and you know it's like a, a measurement of your own build because your build is a little out of order like double gassing right now too is it's too much because like you, building one gas would have been totally fine and the reason why two gas is too much right now is because the only way you're going to properly saturate these is if you rip probes off the mineral line. And if you do that, you're really going to severely delay your natural because you're going to have such bad income. So if you would have gone like one gas, nexus, second gas or something like that, it might have gone a little bit better for you. It would just be more optimal for like the same result, but it would keep your minerals flowing really well. You're mining because look how delayed your uh, your natural is now too it's just your natural is going to be starting when your core is like done pretty much and you're uh you're cutting probes again too to be able to to do this and i i also see that you also did take a double gas in the zerg's base um, but this is the thing about gassing your opponent's base. This is something you should uh, keep in mind, okay? The concept of gassing your opponent's base forces your opponent to play with a mineral heavy build. Okay? And if a Zerg is being forced to play with a mineral, mineral heavy build, they only really have, and they're not proxying you, they really only have one option. And that one option is to make drones like excuse me <clears throat> from like a, a from a zerg's perspective if i if i was this zerg player and i got double gas blocked like this what would i do and i also scouted that you went for like a natural and you're expanding i would just go all right i'm just gonna make drones and eventually when i take my gas i'll just take it at my natural and i'll have like my queen kill the gases in my main while it injects larva but what's happening is, like and that, that wouldn't this would not slow me down at all i would just make drones all day and I would not worry about getting attacked because you're expanding. Like, this Zerg should not feel pressured at all because you're expanding. So it doesn't make a lot of sense if you steal someone's gas and then you expand behind it. Instead, what would make a lot of sense is if you forced a Zerg to have only minerals and you did something aggressive to them. To where you're like, alright, well, if I, do, if, if I do this aggressive thing, I'm only going to have to worry about queens, slowlings, drones, and spine crawlers. And maybe that's like a cannon rush and you like you put your cannons down here and you deny their natural and you make them contained in their main while you steal their gas 
and now you completely eliminate the ability for them to be like, oh, I'm going to nidus you, or I'm going to do something, like, I'm going to ravage or bust it. Like, the Zerg is just fucked at that point, right? Like, you just ruined his day. The best thing Zerg can do at that point is kill his gases and then retake them himself and have his gas really delayed to be able to do anything with gas tech involved. So gas dealing is really, really, really great if you are going to be aggressive, but it really makes no sense if you're going to be macro oriented because all you really did is you delayed your own natural really hard and you're giving the Zerg the ability to take the advantage if he takes a third base, which is what he's doing. So you, you've effectively put yourself behind because your build just, it, it, like, the idea is cool, but it just, it, this is more of an aggressive thing, but you're going defensive while gas dealing, so you're just investing money to slow your own build down, more or less. And if the Zerg reacts properly, it doesn't do anything to his build. Your base is under attack again. <coughs> just for fun, too. Um, we're gonna remember two things, okay? Hey, your base is under attack. It's a trap. I'm actually gonna bust out a notepad here. Because I want to, this is going to be something we're going to come back to later when I make an example build. Check this out. At three minutes, you have 25 probes. And we're going to look at four minutes as well, and then five minutes. Alright, and we'll come back to that at four minutes again. Uh, and you're going for a robo. It's all G. And you're making a sentry. Um, you know, it's too early to tell what kind of a build exactly you're going to go for. We'll, time will tell. We'll see soon. But... The biggest problem for you that I can already see is just, it's literally just your efficiency of your build. It, uh... It definitely makes your life a lot harder. Pretty sure that wall is wide open. Okay, so chat, listen to this, okay? If there is one thing I can say about this wall being wide open, that is not that big of a deal. Although I don't agree with gas dealing if you're going to expand, the fact that he did also rules out the fact that he can be hit by Zergling speed. The Zerg doesn't have gas to be like, oh, we have Zergling speed really fast. His gas was blocked. So his Ling speed is already guaranteed delayed by at least like a full minute. Depending on how fast he took a gas at his natural. So, you don't really have to worry about a Ling Flood. Although, I still do think this wall should be filled in with, like, this gateway, for instance. It's still not the biggest deal. Because, yeah, it's it's a very delayed Ling speed. One thing, I, th this is happening again, too. You did this earlier with the probes building the gases in your main, and then you're doing it again with this probe building the gas in your natural, and you also did it with the probe building the gateway. Make sure, uh, whenever you build any building, it does not matter, 100% make sure that probe goes back to mining minerals every single time, and it does not just chill. I totally understand if, like, your probe is in an area where it's going to build multiple buildings and it doesn't want to go back after one building, that's totally fine. But if your probe is going to build a building and then sit there next to it until it's done, or for just for... Even if it's like six seconds or something like that, it's not worth it. It's... it's it, These things are definitely slowing you down, just like we talked about earlier, with like the missing probes as well. You 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 are just missing so many minerals that you could be having. Because you can see right here too, I love it when things like this happen. Where, uh, you know, for just for the sake of having an example. We look at units lost. The only thing that's happened is... Uh, the Zerg looks like he canceled a gas at some point in time. He probably did it early in the game because he went to 14 drones and then gas canceled one to get a 15 drone out before his overlord was done. Because that six represents he canceled an extractor. 150 for you represents the two gases that died in his main base. But you're still, that, that's, all, that's all that's happened, but you're still behind already by a lot. And at this stage in the game, when the Zerg's larva injects are just now starting to kick in, they haven't been here the entire time. They're just now starting to kick in. This is kind of like a, a scary deficit for you. And if we look at the workers, your workers are actually like surprisingly similar to his. This guy did not drone nearly enough, nearly as much as he could have uh, at this point. But 
my, my point is, is you're just behind already in the game for, uh, for like, kind of like no reason. Um, like nothing's really happened to make you be behind. And then we're going to go here again and we're going to look at another example of four minutes on the notepad. At four minutes, you're at 34 robes. <coughs> Your worker count's not terrible. It's definitely not like awful or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not saying like, oh my god, it's just the worst. But it definitely is not as good as it should be. I like the kill in the Overlord. That's good. I also like that you're scouting with a hallucinated phoenix because the last time you checked the Zerg is when you scouted with a probe. Uh oh. I, so, the one thing I'll, I'll just say, you know, from seeing this, I assume you just selected all army and attack this, and these phoenixes get selected by select all army. So, uh, yeah, just be careful about that, because you just wasted your scout. The scout now is, if you turned it around right now, it would still be able to see some stuff, but your, your scout's already half dead, and it's back at your base again. Okay, you turned it around right away, which is good. We're going to talk about this in a little bit. But this is a... Uh... Yeah, we'll talk about this in a minute. And the... Okay. So, we'll, we'll, I'll just kind of... I'll try to go over it a little bit right now as to what I want to tell you. This right here is having a observer and a hallucinated phoenix. This is one reason why you might struggle getting killed by all ends. And he, here's the bottom line. Okay? So, obviously, you really need to make sure your wall is looking good. Uh, at this point now, even though you blocked his gas, he could totally have link speed and he could fuck you up uh, if he wanted to. It's, enough time has passed now to where he could still have link speed uh, at this point in the game. And you haven't really scouted anything up to this point as well, so you don't know what he's doing for sure. <coughs> Other than the first probe. So a lot of time's passed and a lot of things could potentially happen. Now, another thing that's scary for you is you have depleted your only form of control by making a hallucinated phoenix. And you have also made an observer first. So you have... You've in, you've inve you have invested into tech, and this is time that passes that is that could be crucial in the early game if you're getting all in. And you've made an observer first, so you made double scouts, which made you double vulnerable because now you don't have like an immortal, and you also don't have the ability to zone him with force fields. So a recommendation I would have for you would be, if you want to be really defensive and you don't really want to scout with like adepts and stuff like that, that's totally fine. But here's what you should do, okay? You should make sure your wall is looking fucking pristine. Making sure, make sure it's looking really good. We're talking like have a crack in it where one one unit can fit through at a time. You can go stalker first. That's totally fine. And you can have that stalker deny an overlord or whatever. You can still go into a robo. You can still make uh, your observer first if you want to skip the immortal. Um, because you want to go observer into Colossus. I get that. That's fine. But the mistake I think you're making here is you made a lot of stalkers. Instead, what I would recommend you do is you just make more sentries first. Like you go stalker and then sentry, 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 sentry. Make like four sentries after the first stalker. And this will allow you to not only have more minerals to then you, to where you can then chrono boost your nexuses both the entire time and have really, really, really fast bro production. But you could also have a stalker in a doorway and the trade-off could be you can make like one battery. Just one shield battery. And now if he Baneling busts you, Banelings will blow up on that Stalker. And that Stalker will get healed through the Banelings as fast as it's taking damage basically. And it will make that wall way tankier. And you also have the ability then to not only scout with Hallucinated Phoenixes, but you also will then have Sentry Force Fields to block your shit off if he actually all ends you with like the Frontal Push. And then after you make like four Sentries, you can go back into making Stalkers after that. It's just a way more safe opener. 
Uh, and you'd also have your initial hallucinated phoenix. You should, this could be in his base a lot sooner. Like, you could have scouted him, because you did make the sentry second, I saw that. And you made it hallucinated phoenix when this thing had about 40 or like 36 energy. Like, left on it after it made it. And if you made it when it had zero left on it, like, the second it hit 75, you just made one. You could have scouted him like half a minute ago. And you would have saw, like, you know, a lot sooner into like, and that 30 seconds could have made the difference as to knowing if you're getting all in or not. And if you do know you're getting all in, that first hallucinated phoenix should scout his base before you commit to making an observer or not. And if you're like, oh, he's all inning me. I see a bunch of roaches walking at my base or tons of lings. Well, it gives you the option then and go, all right, well, let's make an immortal. Let's make an immortal now instead because I'm getting all in and I need every unit to be produced that I can get. They would just, uh, you know, it would just make the biggest world of difference for you. Engaging the enemy. <clears throat> yeah, your, your wall is definitely scaring me now, though. This wall is asking to be punished because this is a double opener here. You could fit a pylon right there. And this is also a double opener here. And you could fit a pylon there, too. It's way too wide. And it's all, it also has two entrances to your base. The best way to do it would be like if you had a core like right here, you had a gateway connecting to the core right there, and you had like another gateway like right there. And the, like there was like a little gap that existed like right there in that green line between gateway both gateways. And one stalker could fill in like right here. And then suddenly lings get stuck on the stalker and they can't flood your base. So this better some city would help you so much too with uh, the, the, like you know if you don't catch it all in but you get all in. Your warriors have engaged the enemy. Oh yeah, uh, sorry, five minutes, right? We gotta look at your probe count. At five minutes, you have forty-three probes. Yo, thank you, uh, Ambistrator. Uh, or, uh, Administrator. Hope I said it right. Thank you, dude. Love you too, man. You're under attack. Siege up. And then, uh, a perfect way to not get fucked here would be as soon as you want to go defend at your third base, okay? Here's a good, a good style, a good strategy to use. Imagine if you left, like, <clears throat> either a sentry or a stalker. One of the first four sentries you made, or just an, a stalker. Doesn't matter what stalker it is, just a stalker. And that wall we just talked about right now. And if you made one battery like we talked about. Now, if a Ling run by comes to your main base, and it tries to go into your natural, that clogs it up, and it holds it, and you don't have to worry about it flooding in your base and being like, oh, shit. So it keeps your entire main and natural safe from run bys. And it would buy you enough time if it's too much for that stalker and shield battery to handle. It would easily buy you enough time for this army to come back from where it is at your third, back to the natural. Meanwhile, when you take a third base like this, I, I'd like that you're going to defend it, but imagine also if the second you made the pylon and the nexus to get, like they should be made together right away, which would mean that if this nexus is eight seconds of the way done, this pylon should already be more than, or just about halfway done right now, basically. Uh, time is everything, right? It's like, in StarCraft, every second is really important. But the second the pylon's done, making just, like, two shield batteries. Because this is way more exposed. And it, this army is actually... It has a lot of scary amounts of... It has a lot of DPS. A Colossus would roast Lings all day. And Stalkers would help a, a lot with, like, you know, getting rid of some of the Lings in, as well, but also body blocking for the Colossus. And also just killing Stalker... Or, uh, killing, a. Uh, Roaches or Ravagers, something like that. The Stalkers are great. They're going to help a lot. And if you had a few more sentries here, like three sentries or four, depending on if you left a sentry in your wall or not, you now have the ability to also zone him. And you can be like, force shield the ramp. Stuff like that. Because you just have more force shields to work with. And you would easily, you know, like your third suddenly becomes like twice as powerful as it is already because of shield batteries and because of your, your ability to zone him. Because if he does not make drones and he decides, you know what? No, I'm going to all in you. 
those force fields on this ramp and a couple of shield batteries will definitely make the difference as to how well you can hold an all-in or not. If, if that were to happen. Like this run by wouldn't happen. Exactly what we talked about, right? They would be they would have gotten stuck on the stalker at the door, and they would have all just died. So that would have not only eliminated his ability to scout your base, it would have not made you not have to rip probes off the mineral line. And did you lose any probes to that at all? And you wouldn't have lost that probe as well. Alright, six minutes. Your probes are getting wrecked. At six minutes, you are at 48. Now, this push is very scary. And this is why this push is scary. Your composition you're going for is it's exponentially powerful, but it's substantially weak in small numbers. The more Colossus you have, and the more coverage you have for your Colossus in the form of force fields, the more zoning ability you have, because you can make lines of force fields and really dice Zerg's army apart, it gets more powerful the larger it is. But pushing with an army like this is really, really, really risky, because if this dude decided, you know what I want to do? I, I've been making roaches, for instance. Let's just say he was going for a lot of roaches. Roaches with speed on creep, which could he could have right now if he if he would have gone for like a uh, like a layer early on. Like the, the you know his first gas goes into a layer. Or like he gets a link speed and then an immediate layer after that and then he immediately gets a roach speed is what I'm trying to say. He could totally have roaches right now, and he could totally have a roach speed. We're, we're at six and a half minutes into the game, basically. And <clears throat> you don't have the ability to zone him, nor do you have the ability to run away. Because your stalkers don't have blink, and you're, you're, uh, you don't have a prism here to escape. You don't have enough sentries to block him off. And if you recalled, you would, you would get some of your shit out, guaranteed. But you would lose a lot of it. So this is super risky, and what I would recommend you do is instead of doing this, I would say you should you should definitely uh, you could have more sentries, and you could have like one or two hallucinated phoenixes going like this. At this stage in the game, where you're like, all right, I'm establishing my third base. Literally, do this: two sentries hallucinate a phoenix on each one. One phoenix goes like this, north. It just goes fucking. It just goes like straight like this, north and around. Checks base, checks that base, flies down here, flies towards the natural now. You just literally check the entire top side of the map to see how many bases the Zerg is on. The other sentry uh, phoenix that you just made goes like this. Goes down, checks this base, checks this base, flies up, checks this base, checks this base, flies further into his base if it doesn't die yet. And you just, you just successfully scouted how many bases your opponent's on. And as a Protoss player, if you're a Zerg opponent, is on the equal number of bases as you are, and you've been efficiently making probes the entire time, you should feel fucking really good about yourself. Because that is not good for Zerg. That is good for Protoss. Because, like I said before, this army is exponentially stronger. If It scales very well if you get a lot of it. And the Zerg player is kind of fucking around, not really maximizing his time. You are going to roll his ass so hard. It's going to be very one-sided. Especially if he's the kind of Zerg player that goes like Hydras. And let's just see for fun. Is that the kind of player that you're fighting? No, you're actually playing a Spire Zerg. And that's that's exactly what Hallucinated Phoenixes would help you see, too. If you just throw in a couple Phoenixes because you have more sentries to work with, you would actually fly through his base and go, Oh, shit! It's a Spire. So there's ways you can counter that. Uh, I'll just give you a couple really fast. One way you can counter a Spire build, okay? Get Blink on your Stalkers. Get two Forges. Weapons, shield upgrades, make one battery or two batteries per, per base with like two cannons accommodating them. So like literally like two cannons and a battery or two cannons and two batteries. And you put them like this, like cannon, cannon, battery, battery, you're good to go. And you can do it at every single base while making probes, getting to that full saturation of three bases. 
and now suddenly mutas fly into your base and you just blink your stalkers onto them every time and those batteries shield upgrades and cannons not only kill like a muta here and there but they they save all your probes no probes die because the mutas have to deal with the cannons first and then kill the probes and the cannons actually will be healed enough with especially with the shield upgrade to where the battery will be like just healing it all day and you it buys you time to blink out of the mutas and kill them and you're good to go. The, the one way you crush mutas is you don't let the zerg make you rip your mineral lines apart. Like you, you don't let you don't go. Oh shit, mutas! R run away! Run away! Run away! Like that's the worst way you can fight against mutas because that allows the zerg to screw your economy over. So the the static D will help a lot. That's one way you could deal with it. Another way you could deal with it is right now you go. Oh, he's going spire. Let's just make like two stargates and go. All right, well I'm just gonna double chrono boost some phoenix out. And now, when the Zerg shows up at my base with 10 mutas, I suddenly have 6 Phoenix. And I'll keep making more until I crush all of his mutas. And now, let's say I have like 12 Phoenix, and all the Zerg's mutas just died. I can stop there and be like, well, if he remix mutas again, I still have a very scary amount of Phoenix that will probably win another fight. And we're good. And I can go back into Stalker Colossus then and go kill him. So there's multiple ways you can deal with it. The worst thing that'll happen, though, is you just don't realize mutas are happening at all, and you're like, oh, fuck. I didn't prepare for this at all, now let's just base trade. Like, that's that's obviously... That, sometimes that does happen, but that's not ideal for Protoss. Which is why, in general, if you... And here's a tip for you. If you don't know what your opponent is doing at all, okay? You're just like, I have no fucking clue what he's doing. It's a good thing... To go like you're already going for the composition it's just good to go for double forge weapon shield upgrades if this is going to be your comp colossus stalker sentry because it helps a lot the shield upgrades are amazing not only at helping your army be a little bit more tanky but the shield upgrades are immensely powerful at dealing with zergs who counterattack you and a lot of zergs out there love to counterattack protoss it's just this is what they live for They're like i fucking love killing bases and probes Shield upgrades will massively hinder how effective that is for a Zerg. And then getting blink as well. And then if you're like, oh shit, mutas. You could do something like run your probes away. Recall your army if you're out of position. Push the mutas away one time. And then do what I said where you make battery, battery, cannon, cannon. Fix your probes if any of them died. And now you're back to that exact counter I just talked about. Uh, one of the ways you could just shit on Zerg. Shield upgrades instead of armor. Yes. Uh, this is th this is lower level Protoss, and lower level Protoss is 100% fine to turtle up, death ball, and move out and kill the Zerg. And turtling up and death balling is so fucking easy if you have shield upgrades. This is a massive mistake, moving out with this army right now. Like I said earlier, this is a big mistake, because this army is very susceptible to just being fucking slapped off the world here and can totally die. couple of things here first thing first <clears throat> this army um, again should not be here in the first place this is really scary uh, your, your army is definitely in danger zone right now and the second thing is uh, probably the best way I would say you could have micro this would have been kill off this guy's lings that he has on you right now if you if you're already in the situation okay if you were to kill the lings, back up when the when the bane lings come, you back up to like right here, okay? Or you just kill the bane lings as they're morphing if you can. But he is flooding you with lings while this is simultaneously happening, so that's not realistically going to happen. You're dealing with the lings too. If you just backed up to like right here, bane lings try to come down the ramp, and as they're starting to come down the ramp, you put two force fields, one there, one there. Let's say he pulls the bane lings back as well. You could just walk to his third base and kill a bunch of drones and then recall away. Because you know he's making army non-stop and this army, you should never think that this army is going to win you the game. This is like a harassment and this is also asking to lose your army. These units are way more expensive than Zerglings are. So letting the Zerg be able to fight you in small supply is giving the advantage to Zerg. Uh, the second thing is Guardian Shield only affects ranged weapons. 
Incoming range damage reduced by two. Melee uh, does not get affected by this. So Zerglings and Bailings are both doing full damage to you either way. It's not like a damage reduction for everything. It's only range DPS. So you're, the only thing you would actually reduce the damage of is a queen if this queen was shooting something under the bubble. And that's it. And the queen's damage is like very irrelevant in the situation. Especially if it's only like one or two queens. I think you're just putting yourself <clears throat> into a situation where you're panicking. Really quickly, uh, let's back it up one more time to seven minutes. <laughs> That's all I can see. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so at 7 minutes, you are at 53 probes. This is important. This, this, I'm not gonna lie, what we're looking at right here on this list, this is the most important thing out of this entire game. By far. Uh, by far. And we'll also, you know what, we'll do this too. Sorry, I should do this. This also makes a big difference. Let me go back to a couple of these. I should have wrote these down the first time. It'll be really fast though, because I've already loaded the replay timer, so it'll go quickly. Five minutes, two, three, yeah. And we'll look at four minutes as well. I won't do any more after this. Uh, we don't really need to know at three minutes, is it? Really? Or you know what? Fuck it. Let's just do it. I'm already done this much. Let's just make it. You know, let's just make. Let's just do it. There's just one more. Okay. Now we'll go back to where we just were. So now your army is all dead here, because again, it, sh it should not have moved out. This army, this is giving advantage to Zerg like we talked about. Let's look at resources lost really quick. Uh, you've actually killed a little bit more out of Zerg than you've lost. But the problem for it, though, is uh, the units you that you lost <coughs> take longer to rebuild than it does for Zerg to rebuild just a bunch of Zerglings. Like this Zerg can easily replace the Lings that he just lost. But you replacing two Colossus is going to take a while. And getting your Colossus to that, that scary number, which is like five, four or five, that's ideally what you want to be hitting at. So now you've, your timing that is effective, that's actually a good timing, is now just delayed more. Which also means if it's not, it's not even just about attacking. It means now your defense timing is also delayed because if this guy does some type of a, a really aggressive thing to you and you have less Colossus, it's going to be scarier. And for those of you who think that, oh, he's going Spire, it doesn't matter. It does, especially if he goes Mutas. Because if he goes Mutas against Stalker Colossus, if you have enough Colossus to just literally eliminate the Zerglings out of the equation immediately, because they're, they're just running into laser beams, well, now it's just Mutas versus Stalker Colossus. And that means Stalkers now don't have to worry about Lings while they kill Muta, which is a big deal. That's amazingly good for the Stalker. The, the way Stalkers lose to Muta is when they're getting flooded by Lynx at the same time. Like, if, you, if you've ever had... And this is another thing, too. If you have shield upgrades... Okay, not only would you be good at dealing with Muta Ling Bane, you know, defensively with your base being a little bit more stable otherwise, because the Mutas won't do as much. And if you have your gateways walling properly, the Ling Bane won't do as much. While the cannons continuously pick at shit. But if you have a bunch of mutas fly over your stalkers and you pop you pop a guardian shield with shield upgrades and you wrote you little by little plink a couple stalkers away that are getting attacked by the muta so you literally just go oh mutas are attacking me pop guardian shield and then just try to click stalkers that are getting attacked and blink them away from the muta your stalkers are going to trade at like amazing 
super, super, super good trades for you. If that's how the fight goes. Mutas do, do not trade well against uh, Stalkers with Guardian Shield. And defensive upgrades as well. They trade awful. Uh, and he's going Corruptor though, so... That's also fine. Uh, this is e this is honestly also really important now for having a good Colossus number because if this guy engages you with everything at once, his cl his corruptor are going to kill some of your Colossus. But if you have enough Colossus to weather the damage of of corruptors while simultaneously killing Lings at the same time, and he basically kills your Colossus as you kill all of his Ling Bane, if it if the fight turns into a situation where now it's just Stalkers fighting corruptors, that's a win for Protoss. Because you, you can blink under the Corruptors repeatedly and kill them all. And if you have enough Colossus to thin out the Lings really fast, and now it's you're still you're now saving some of your Colossus, while the Corruptors either dive and, and suicide for them or run away, that's also amazing. Alright, uh, another one. Uh, oh, sorry, I miss, I miss, I'll, we'll do 9 minutes and 8 minutes in a second. At 9 minutes you have... how many probes? 70 probes. Thank you for the bits, Nautilus Italian. Thank you, dude. And at eight minutes. Thank you, dude. And Zephy, thank you very much, dude, for the uh, 42 month sub. Almost the five babies. So many babies! I fucking love you, man. Thank you very much, Zephy, for the sub. You boss. Alright, and then now we have 61 probes. And 88 supply. The build I'm going to do for you, by the way, is going to go up to 10 minutes. Um, Ace, ring a bell. That I'm going to... Uh, the example build I'm going to give you. So, we, your observer saw he's going Link Bane. Uh, I don't mind that you're getting charged, but do you already have Blink? You do not have Blink. So, Blink should definitely be the priority here. Stalkers and Colossus pair very well together, uh, and so do sen like some sentries with just Stalker Colossus is an amazing, universally good composition against most armies of Zerg. Uh, it's and the reason why it's so good is because it hits timings that Zerg dies to all the time. The Zerg has to be very technical and good at dealing with that to get around that, but a lot of Zerg players will die straight up to it, especially in like plat to diamond level. The thing about Charge and Zealots that doesn't make a lot of sense is your opponent's going for heavy Banelings. You'd be much better off having a couple of force fields make sentries. Or, sorry, a couple. I said that backwards. Having a couple of sentries make force fields as the Banelings try to engage you, and now suddenly you make like five force fields, and all the Banelings slam into the force field wall and they try to go around it while your Stalkers and Colossus are just basically mowing the lawn. And most of the Banes die before they even connect at all. That would be much better. You'd be much better off. Dealing with, it, dealing with it like that rather than having you know making like let's say like 20 zealots and they all charge into a bunch of banes and they all die because banelings versus zealots is actually an advantage for zerg especially if they're clumped up banelings will trade way better than like you can have like 30 banes versus 30 zealots all the zealots charge into 30 banes and you could literally win the fight with zerg and have 20 banes left over or like 15 banes still left over because all the zealots just got AoE down, and not even all the banes needed to be used for that. Zealots would make more sense if you were going for, like, Archon Immortal. Something that's just, like, a power army that just, uh, you know, is gonna do a different... It's a totally different composition entirely. Because it wouldn't matter that if he's going, uh, like, Mutas, for instance, if you have a bunch of Archons. Because <laughs> that's another thing, too, that is, if you go if you go for too many Zealots and you're going Colossus, you're very vulnerable now to a mass Muta switch. Then 10 minutes is the final one, right? Yeah, we'll do 10 minutes. So 
so it's coming up here in just a second. Your income tab here. Ten minutes. Blah blah blah. Right now. Oh. So ten minutes. This is the final one. You have uh, seventy-six probes, and you're at one forty-six supply. Jesus, can't type. Okay, so that's the final one. We'll go over this again when I make an example. We'll come back to that later. And now you're just dead. Because your army's out of position. It turned into like a like a semi base trade. The thing about it is he saw where you were with creep. You didn't really know where he was because you don't have any scouts. This is this is definitely an advantage for Zerg. This is just something Zerg does easier. And the way you gotta get around it is you gotta be very active with something running around the map. It could be an observer, it could be a zealot, it could be a hallucination. Something. Um, but you should always my, the point I'm trying to make here is you should never leave your base unless it's with purpose. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you where you went wrong. So now, right now, okay? Look at your uh, vision. We're completely blind, right? We just got attacked a second ago by Banes. It wasn't even a mass army. We'll, we'll actually watch the fight too. Why not? This is the army right here. We're coming to defend it. It's like a, This is like a harassment force. This is not a main army of Zerg. This army for Zerg looks like it's worth about like 12 supply. And he didn't even lose all of it. Some of it ran away. The army that he just lost for, for Zerg is probably worth like 9 supply. That's, that's nothing. That's like literally not even as many zealots as you just warped in. So now we have to, you know, like what are we doing right here? We're, we're moving out now on the top side of the map. So now we're very vulnerable to getting attacked, which is exactly how you just died. You'd be much better off, instead of just moving out blindly like this, attacking around the side of the map. Like with like a zealot. Like send one zealot now. Like, similar to how I explained the phoenixes earlier with with uh, the hallucinations. You could be like one zealot attack this way, then this space, then this space. One zealot go attack this space, then this space, then this space, then this space, and then this space. And you could just see how many bases is, is this guy on. And there might be a chance as well when you do that with a zealot, you might also come across somebody or uh, not somebody, but you might come across like a counterattack army. Like maybe, oh shit, my zealot just ran into 30 lings up here. And that's something that you have to worry about. But when you leave your base, you need to also make sure it's going to be able to sustain some shit. Like imagine this, okay? Imagine this. Imagine if you had three gateways, or, if, or even four, it takes four. Gateway, 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 gateway. Fully walled off your top part of your base, okay? This is fully walled. So the only entrance into your natural, or sorry, into your, this is your third. The only entrance into your third base is through right here. He can't, unless he flies into it, but then you, let's say you also made, you scouted his base eventually and you saw he had a spire. And you make a couple of static defense structures. It eliminates the ability to get counterattack from the north side. It's, it's, it's dealt with. Your natural is how we talked about earlier. It's not wide open like this. It's like you got like that one gap for a stalker. So your natural is really hard to get attack as well, just to run into it. You could leave a stalker there literally the entire time. Uh, and then now if, if you're thinking about like, where could I expand and where would make sense? A great way to expand could be like right here. And you could even make a couple of gateways against the bottom of this ramp, or you could make a couple of gateways, like literally like one gateway here, a gateway there, touching the nexus, like you put a gateway between the nexus and the gas, and you can make like an even, like a gateway like right here. So then if he wants to attack this side, he can't run into your probe line, straight up. He would have to run around the top side of it, to come around and attack the bottom of it. So then what you could do is you could put your army, that your, your new units, that you make while you're attacking, your whole army could stand like right here. It could just chill right the fuck there. That way if he attacks you into your third, he has to run through your army. If he attacks into your natural, he has to run through your army. If he attacks into your fourth base, he has to run through your army. It would be a great location for you to expand. It, re it reduces the ability for you to get attacked and killed. And let's say you want to take another base. 
You could totally take, you could like knock out one of these gates, or if you built your gateways around the nexus, like I said before, you could build a nexus here and build a pylon here and put like three gates on the top of this ramp again or some shit like that. You don't have to continuously build gates every time you expand, but if but when you're like at that early stage of the game and you're still needing the gates, you totally should. Like having uh, gates in your main and stuff like that uh, is not really great. How many gates are you actually on? You're on five gates. Yeah, you're on five gates. Five gates is also not necessarily enough. If you're if you're really well saturated on like three bases, the ideal gates ideal gate count would be probably around like eight to ten. Um, once you have full saturation of three base, and you're like you're not really as upgrading as hard, because uh, your upgrades are done, and by ten minutes, honestly, they should probably be a lot further along. Like your your Twilight Council upgrade should be done by now. Um, but yeah, I would say like eight to ten gates. It's it's totally worth worth it. It's totally fine. And then if you expand, let's just say like this base, for instance. I would never say, make a bunch of gates, wall that shit off. Make a bunch of gates and wall that shit off. Make even more gates and wall that off. I would never tell you to do that. But if you're getting shield upgrades and you're getting weapon upgrades, not only does it make your army better, but you could do something like just make a nexus here. Make like pylon, pylon, pylon. Just a few pylons around it. And you could literally make like 10 cannons. Seriously, and it's not even bad. It's, that's not over, it's not like overkill. You can make 10 cannons like cannon, 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 cannon. Like just make 10 cannons spread out around your base. You definitely don't want to be like OCD and be like 10 cannons in this box all in a perfect line. Because then he goes, Banelings, blow them all up. Cool. You don't, you don't want to stack your cannons really hard. But then when you make like 10 cannons, you could then supplement those cannons with like like let's say six to eight shield batteries and then be like battery 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 just fill them in don't block your shit don't like block your mineral line off just put gaps in between them all as best you can and if you have level two or level three shield upgrades which you should have by 10 minutes you could have level two shields by now uh you could have you you just see a zergen counterattack come over here and you're like oh look at the lings your batteries and your cannons will be like and they're dead the cannons, and the cannons and batteries just completely dumped on the lings. Easy peasy. And now you have a mineral line that's just safe to mine the entire time. It's just mining away still. And the, this mineral line is worth way more than like 10 cannons and like 6 or 8 batteries. It's worth way more. 10 cannons and 6 to 8 batteries is not even as much as you have in 2 patches. It's almost the same amount. But then you have six other patches that are just going to continuously mine and never have to worry about dying. And then you could, and then it also give not only that, but a bigger thing it does is it gives you more vision of the map, which controls more. It gives you more of like a safety net because now you know you have this scouted, and now there's there's not that feeling of there being fog here for you to be like, oh shit, he could be close to me. He he could be killing me right now. You know what I mean? But moving out on the map like this, just completely blind and leaving all your bases super exposed, is just asking to be counterattacked by a Zerg. Because Zerg has creep, and they will always see where you are. And if the Zerg really wants to, they have the choice now to go. Let's counter. Like, you're giving him the choice now, because of how you're moving out. And he chose to not fight you, he chose to kill your base instead. Your probes are under attack. <laughs> Your base is under attack, man. Hey, your base is under attack. It's a trap. I think the, the thing I think you're struggling with the most is I think the way you're thinking about Protoss versus Zerg is if you don't do something to kill the Zerg, you're gonna die. Like, the Zerg, if you give the Zerg time, he's just going to kill you. And that's not true if you play for a timing. You're making the somewhat of the right composition to go for a timing, but you're definitely not respecting how to execute using a timing. The goal you should be going for... The, the goal you should have going for an army like this is expanding at, at ideal times. So like making your build flow really well, uh, macro oriented, 
and then building up, building up, building up, and going for a timing when you have like five Colossus, like two, two upgrades, and your supply is basically maxing out. It's it's like 180 plus. That should be when you're like, all right, time to kill Zerg. Let's go. And you'll you'll have so much more success if you play it like that, rather than doing random oh, pokes here and there, yeah. losing some units, delaying your own build by doing an awkward-ish build. But yeah, I can say you're you're better luck next time. Your uh, your biggest issue you're having. There's again, I'll just I'll I'll, I'll give you like a, a three thing three things that are important here. Number one, out of what I just saw, the biggest problem you have is your build order. Your, your build order is not as efficient as it could be. And I'm going to help you with that, which is exactly why I made this. Uh, this is uh, the Bonjoa build. And now we're going to compare this to the Vibe build in a second here. And I'll even send you this notepad if you want. I'll save it and send it to you so you can have this these numbers for reference if you want to. It'll help, I think. Um, you'll understand why later as well. Like when I compare it, you'll you'll see more. But the biggest one is your build. It's not as efficient as it could be by by quite a large margin. The second thing of that I would say is uh, the next glaring problem that is something you need to probably uh, fix uh, we, that we just kind of talked about is uh, your uh, your decision making with your army. Like where you're putting it. Try your best to limit the surface area on your base. And by like putting your army in the right spot and have it to where like your army can easily defend everything you have. And then finally when you're ready, you push when you're ready. You don't You don't push when you're not ready. Like you and you also don't randomly push around the map in like random locations. It'll 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 start make like as long as you feel confident and yourself, it'll make the biggest difference. Like, I, I, again, a lot of players, I feel like they're not sure if they're winning or losing. And they're like, okay, well, I feel like I gotta do something or I'm just gonna die here. That's not true, though. Because the way you can make yourself feel confident is if you make sentries early and you throw out hallucinated phoenixes here and there, and you're like, oh, he hasn't expanded as much as he should have, I'm actually winning in the base count. Or I'm doing, I'm tying him in the base count. As Protoss, even if you don't even know what composition he's going for, you should be like, I feel great. Like, you should also obviously also try to figure out what he's going for, but, like, that, you know, that's that's more information that you could have. But just the fact that he's staying on the same base count as you, you shouldn't feel like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, I'm gonna lose. I need to do something. Like, that's great. It's super great. It's great for you. The last thing, the third thing, is positioning of your buildings. If you position your buildings a little bit more methodically, like, just make proper walls, it'll help so much at, like, helping you handle Zergs that are actually aggressive. Even if you misscout it and you don't realize he's being aggressive until the last second, until he's hitting your base, it'll help so much at, uh, defending it. Because you'll just be like, oh, wow, this is way easier because I have a proper wall. So those, those are the three things I would say that'll help you a lot. And uh, we'll get into that right now. But uh, yeah, yeah, I think you have a good idea as, how, as to how you're doing the matchup. Just fixing a few things will help you a lot. Um, let's do this. Okay, so you just played Cyber Forest. Let's do Cyber Forest again. I'm not gonna have an opponent in this game. It's just gonna be an example build. And realistically, nothing really happened in that game as well, up, up until the point when you attacked him. But uh, this is this is going to be just for the sake of an example, hundred percent example right here. <coughs> and you're gonna <laughs> see what I mean. <coughs> we're gonna take this build to ten minutes. At ten minutes, we're gonna stop, and we're gonna compare uh, where your build was to where my build was, and your upgrades as well. We're at ten minutes when you lost the game, essentially. Your upgrades were 1-1 one, one, and you had charge. That's all you had. Alright, 
All right, so at 15 out of 15, 50 minerals or so. Let's do it. Let's just send a probe down. Now my probe is going to be getting here when my pylon is basically done. So I can immediately throw down that nexus. Or not the nexus, sorry, the, the gateway. And I built it against the wall. <clears throat> I immediately go back up in mine and I make a chrono boost on my uh, mineral line. My probe can come down here and let's just say I see a zerg. Let's say he's expanding like your guy was. He's... Uh, He's playing macro. I'm like, all right, cool. He's macroing. Let's just go oh, home and mine again. Yeah. For now. Let's not focus too much on that probe that's scouting. Yo, Rathbone, thank you for the sub, man. I can take a gas now because I can afford it while continuously making probes. My gateway's almost done. So we're going to get ready here to make a probe come down here. Or if we leave with our probe quickly like we did, actually, you could even do this. You can even make this probe coming back to your base, build the core, and build the nexus. Because we didn't stick around forever to stare at shit and like block gases and stuff like that. Alright, we're making a core. We're gonna put a couple probes on this gas. And we're still at 16. We're maintaining probe production and 16 out of 16. And now we're gonna build a nexus. Oh god, I didn't build that pylon too close. Alright, good. I was like, uh... And now we can build a pylon. And then a probe again. And now we can build a gas. Pylon is going to be finishing. Let's chrono boost my probes. And let's just start saturating my, uh, my natural. Fuck it. Whatever. Make sure my min main mineral line has like two in each patch. It makes it more optimal. It does not have two in each patch. One of them has three. It's this one on the side. So we're going to put one over there, and now every patch has two. And now we're good. We have chrono we have a stalker on the way. We have a core upgrading um, warp gate as well. We start another pylon here. Chrono boost my nexus again. And now if we're going to make another gateway, we can make it like right here. There you go. Now, because look. I have a stalker right here, and if I say, if, let's just pretend this probe is a zergling, okay? And I'm like, hey, probe, come attack my base. And it's, it's like, it's trying to get in. And he just walks into your base, right? So, uh, I didn't realize that was opening. But now look, just make your wall a fucking wall. Just make sure you have a wall. Don't, be, don't, get, don't build a shitty wall like I just did. It would actually be better if I would have built this pile on first. And built a pile, uh... A gateway like that, honestly. Like, whatever though. You get my point. And now we could have, like, you know, a robo being started, whatever. And now that we're at, like, 10 probes on the natural, we're still making centuries, by the way. Rally your gates to your main. We're still making centuries. When we start the robo, we could also start, like, a shield battery. And we could also start the gases at our natural. Keep chrono boosting our probes. Technology researched. And we pay attention to this sentry too, because it's going to have a, a hallucinated phoenix very soon. And now it does. We can just be like, hey, phoenix, go scout the zerg. Go scout his third, and then go into the main. We can saturate the gas here on our natural, because we're going to be having, um, whatever it's called. We're going to be having gas heavy expenses here. Keep making probes, we can chrono boost again as well. And we have right now four centuries, so now we can go back into making stalkers. We just got at his base. So let's say, oh, like your Zerg did. He took a third base, he's making drones. Cool beans. Now at this point, we can do something like this. We can take a probe and we can move it to our third. We can leave one stalker in the doorway here in case we get counterattacked at the same time. And we can move forward to our third base with our probe, and we can just take a Nexus and like a couple pylons. And now suddenly we're way more defended because we have some we have uh, force fields we can work with here. And we even build our uh, pylons like this, actually. This would actually make more sense if I did that first, but it's okay. Now we have Colossus being started. We can warp in stalkers at the new base. Keep making probes. Making probes constantly is the biggest thing out of all of this. You just don't want to stop making probes.
And now this base is done. We can throw some more gates down here. And now suddenly we've just eliminated the ability for us to get counterattack because this is a full wall. Let's say I want to go over there. My probe has to go around. And this also is going to give me more production now. So now I'm up to six gates on three base. I'm here in the shadows. And we've been making probes the entire time. So it's not starting the saturation when it's done. It's going to have like 10 probes at it by the time it finishes. And now that we have a lot of our expenses cut out of our build here, we have the most of our probes being built already. Um, they're mostly done. We have a lot of stuff going on for us. Uh, we can now start getting ready to add in the Cyber Core and the Forges. Or the, the Twilight Council and the Forges. And we can scout them like this, like I talked about earlier. Scout the bases. So now our Phoenixes are going around the map to scout everything. And the main base we could be like, Forge, Forge, Twilight Council. And just like we talked about earlier, let's say the, the Zerg player doesn't attack you still, and he's still chilling. He's like, I don't want to attack you, I'm afraid of Protoss. Like, I'm, I don't want to attack into your defense. Whatever, right? I don't fucking know. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. He, he just isn't attacking. We could be like, alright, let's move a probe over here. And now that this base is walled off and it's really secured, we can leave, like, let's say, just like a couple stalkers or some shit. It doesn't really matter. And move my army mostly in front of my base. And now we can uh, have a fourth base started. Third base is fully saturated. Start uh, shield upgrades and weapon and also get blink. And now we can start kind of boosting the forges with this instead of probes. Because our probes are pretty much done now. And we can make some more sentries again because sentries are amazing at pushing with Colossus. We'll just make like an extra four. Now we're at eight and we're good to go. Our Colossus count right now is currently at two. Okay, now this is done, so like I said before, we can make a couple of gates here. Just like I was talking about. And now we're going to be at nine gates. We're still making some probes. We could even... You could do this even earlier too if you want, just with a, with a couple of uh, pylons, just to make sure you're not going to get fucked by some Nidus Worm action. Another Colossus. Forges are looking good. And now we're at 12, 13 probes on this base. Probe count is now at 80. We can call it a day. We're good. 80 is good to go. Keep chrono boosting the forges. We can we can send out a couple more hallucinated phoenix once again. Same exact thing we did last time. Scout him. We can be like, oh, what's he doing? Is he going for uh, spire or whatever? And now this stage of the game, when we're when we have a really high supply, we're looking really solid. We're almost at that, like, five Colossus death ball ish count. We can do something like we can start our 2-2. Two -two. We can keep making Stalkers. And now look at my money. It's going to probably start ramping pretty fast. So now at this point, let's just say, oh, we saw a Spire. I could have my Stalkers around my base defending, whatever. But I could go like this. Cannon, cannon, battery. That base is now going to be really well defended. I could go cannon, cannon, um, battery, uh, cannon, cannon, battery. We can make some more sentries because we have a lot of gas. Sentries are great for just like going with Colossus and, you know, smashing them. But we now have static D at every base except for the base I'm currently really defending. And we're basically maxed out. And then goes cannon, chrono, chrono. Cannon, cannon, battery, right? So now we have static D. We'll, we'll uh, stop it right here. We have static D at every base, right? We went to 10 minutes. This is the whole goal of the build. Up to 10 minutes. At this point, I could push with, with four Colossus. I could push with uh, four Colossus, 31 Stalkers, 14 Sentries, and an Observer. And I'm ready to fucking go. And I, all I did the entire time was defend myself. That's it. I just defended myself. In case he would have attacked me. But now this army is super scary. And if this guy does counterattack me with like mutas or some shit, again, I have these buildings that are going to buy me a lot of time.
and the shield battery, or the, sorry, the, the shield battery plus the shield upgrade is going to make a massive world of difference at how well and how much time this, how much damage these things absorb without dying. It's great. Uh, for this kind of a style when you're worried about Zerg's counterattacking you. And look how much sentries I have to like, force field, force field, force field. If you want to really ramp it up and you get better at this build, making like a, a, a Templar Archives and um, making a Templar Archives and making like Archons for Storm is great. It's fucking wonderful. Is this build weak against Lurkers? It's weak against Lurkers if you play against a Zerg who actually macros properly. But if we're talking about Platinum level to like low Diamond level, we're that's what we're going to look at right now. Okay? This is, this is the comparison that I'm going to talk to you guys about, which is why a lot of people don't understand how things make sense and how things don't make sense. Check this out. This is why I wrote this shit down. Because people, people do not respect the timer. Okay, I don't, I don't have a fucking title thing up here, whatever. So we have right now 26 harvesters on 30 supply. Three minutes. 26 probes, uh, 30 supply. It's the same thing as the Bonjois, the, the Bonjois build. Four minutes. What's four minutes at? Does the shield upgrade make a difference? Yes, because it upgrades your units and your buildings and your army is mostly blink stalkers. So if you actually get better at microing it, it will also make that even better too. At four minutes, we are at 38 probes with 46 supply. You can see between three minutes, at three minutes, we were tied, pretty much. I had one more probe than him at three minutes, but the supply was the same, which means uh, we he probably had a probe just in production, but it wasn't done yet. It's the only, it's probably the difference, which means he's, he's already starting to fall behind, but it's not super game breaking yet. Four minutes, I've now pulled ahead by four probes and three supply. And this is before anything even happened, right? Five minutes. Sixty-two supply, forty-six workers. Forty-six probes, sixty-two supply. So now I'm ahead at six minutes. Uh, hold on, or f five minutes, Jesus. I was like, what? Five minutes. It's, uh, I'm still ahead by three workers. Supply is the same though, okay? Supply is the same at, at five minutes. Do I keep, I think I keep saying six minutes. At five minutes, we're ahead by three workers and supply is the same. Six minutes. <coughs> we are at 52 probes. Probes with 83 supply. At six minutes for this build, it was, it's now, he's now behind by four workers and also by four supply at six minutes. So these are, these are minor differences. They're not the biggest, right? These differences are kind of minor so far. It's because, again, every second earlier in the game is more important than the next second of the game because it sets the build up. So even though it looks really similar right now, this is exponential gains you're getting from one to like one second after another. Thank further. you for the informatively positive stream. Vibe with me to vibe with you. Yo, fucking thank you very much, uh, Tomasake, for the ten, and I appreciate the beautiful words, dude. Thank you, man. Yeah. But every second early on in the game, it sets the pace for every second later in the game, which is why it might not look as impactful when it's like Search. only a little bit of differences, but it is massively impactful. Uh, all right, so now at seven minutes, we're at uh, 65 probes with 109 supply. So this is the big one, seven minutes, seven minutes. The probe count now is different by 12 and the supply is different by 23. Obviously, I know he took an attack as well with like two Colossus and like Two Colossus, one Sentry, and like eight Stalker. Uh, but that's again, that's you don't. There's no need to do that. There's no reason why that has to happen. Um, when you're playing like this, so it's still you know it's it makes a difference as to what you could be at basically. At eight minutes now, we're at 
73 probes. For, and also we're at uh, 134 supply. So now at 8 minutes, when you compare it, we're now 12 probes ahead. And we are, uh, what is that? Like It's like 40, 50 supply almost. It's like 46 supply or some shit. It's a lot. That's 46 supply is not minor. Uh, that's also, you have to account for the fact that a few units probably also died around this point in uh, his game. But it, again, if it, it, there's a big reason, it's like if you just kept that shit defensive, it makes a big difference. At nine minutes, we now have, you see how it ramps up really fucking hard because you, you manage your economy properly? It, every second earlier makes everything faster later. We're now 163 supply. At 9 minutes. At 10 minutes? Before the base trade even happened, we're now beating the supply a full minute earlier of the other build. Uh, at 9 minutes. So at 9 minutes, we're at 160, 163 supply with 80 probes. And at 9 minutes here, that's a 10, probe, uh, 10 probes down and also 33 supply down. And then at 10 minutes, we're going to still be at 80 probes because we don't make any more. Uh, we're at 80 probes again because it's ideal saturation for this. And then we're at 195 supply. And also, upgrade-wise, 2-2 uh, is halfway done. We are in the process of chrono boosting it. We do have blink as well. But this is that moment where you, you know, you can take a timing and at 10 minutes, this is a 50 supply lead. Four worker lead, 50 supply lead. And now you could be like, okay, now we're going to take the fight. And if the game happened, if, if like, if we fought against that Zerg who, you know, the, the Bonjois build fight, fought against, if we fought against that Zerg who did the base trade, uh, we have a much stronger army. 195 supply versus 146 supply. That is a big fucking difference in how powerful your army is going to be. That's like twice the army size. So that would very likely net you a win right there. Because if you do something efficient, especially if, if your opponent takes little trades where he's like, if the Zerg player was like running a couple of Banes and a couple of Zerglings at my base, like right here. He's trying to run into my base. This is a wall. This is, this is, these are buildings are connected. Look at the, look at the yellow circles, how they overlap a little bit. That is a wall right there. If, if the, if the, like if you build on a grid, okay, and you build a gateway to a gateway like that, where it's like corner to corner, that is not a wall and little units like a Zergling can fit through that. But if you build it like this, where you have one piece of overlapping gateway to gateway, that now is a wall. So no, no longer can anything fit through that. Little units cannot fit through that because it's now considered a wall. Which is exactly what we did here. We overlapped the nexus a little bit to the, on the side. We didn't build it the gateway right here. Or rather, right here. We did not build the gateway there. Which is what that, that would have not have been, that would not be a wall. So we overlapped it with one pixel there. And same thing here, this gateway is against the nexus, that is a wall. So he'd have to run into my stalkers. This is a full wall. This is connected to the, the sides of the cliff, so you can't run through there at all. And this right here, in case he would have like ran on the side of the ramp and tried to go right into my main base, that is a stalker blocking it with a wall. This is, this is literally enclosed, unless I move the stalker. And the, we have a battery as well that could heal it. So... And then, yeah, if you really want to do it too, like you could even put like two cannons or three cannons here behind the gateways with like a battery or two. And that would also help a lot at dealing with like things like roaches or something. But this this move out, this kind of a timing would be massive. This is this is a more efficient type of a build. And the whole point, the whole process of how we'd want to use this army is we would want to hallucinate a couple of phoenixes. The reason why I say Hallucinate Phoenix as well is because it's the fastest hallucination there is out of this entire list. So it's going to be the quickest scout you can possibly get. And it also flies, so it doesn't have to also run around terrain, which in turn also makes it faster. Uh, but let's just say we hallucinated a couple of Phoenixes and we saw, okay, Zerg doesn't have bases up here. 
Zerg does not have bases down here. Zerg does have these three bases, and he's taking a fourth base here, or he's taking a fourth base here. We could then decide, okay, let's go attack the, the, the new base. It's the least amount of defense. There's It's wide open. It's going to be a great place for me to launch an attack with my, with my army or whatever. Or you could be like, okay, I want to attack a choke point and force field the shit out of it. You just got to be watching your army when this fight happens and just go... You can even prematurely make force fields, by the way. If you're like, Zerg is right there. And just to, just to be like extra safe about it, uh, you could uh, you could even make force fields before you even take the fight. Because you have so many fucking sentries. Again, later on, you can make High Templars with this too, when you're comfortable microing like Storm along with Colossus. It's amazing against Zerg to do that. But for now, if you just want to focus on microing force fields, we have three, 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 four, four, three, two, two, one, 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 one. All those numbers I just said, you add those together, I'm, I'm going to estimate here what I just said. It's probably around like fucking 25 force fields. Like, I could already throw down right away. 25 force fields is fucking insanely large number. You could easily zone a Zerg army really hard with 25 force fields. And you got to keep in mind that if you had this many centuries, they would also be generating energy the entire time the fight's happening too. So you're generating with 14 centuries, a unit generates energy, we'll just roughly say about once per second, okay? So you're generating energy at a rate where every... 50 seconds, or yeah, every 50 seconds, you're going to get 14 more force fields, which is a lot of force fields. <clears throat> uh, so is there a hard order of priority, for example, probes, tech unit, gateway unit, static D? Yes. Probes are the number one priority. Tech is number two priority behind probes. And uh, um, per keeping production out of your tech is number three priority. And then the last priority is your static D. It is literally the order you set it in. Static, I threw down the static D. Keep, in, keep this in mind, okay? This is something that's also important to note. I could have maxed out before 10 minutes. Watch, watch around 9.30, okay? I start building static D right now. Now look at my gateways. And my robo. I could have right now. I could have ten more supply than I do, if I did not make cannon, cannon battery, and another cannon down here. I could have made two stalkers and a colossus. I could make. I could make even more. Right now, I made another cannon, cannon battery. I'm making more cannon, cannon battery over here. My supply 100% could be higher if I prioritized. Making units out of my gates and my and my robo. But here's the thing. I'm delaying my timing by probably about 30 seconds. Like 20 to 30 seconds. Because I'm actually preparing for an anti... Like a, like a defense against a counterattack. I've now prepared myself to deal with counters way better. And now if this guy goes, you know what? I want a base trade. Suddenly, my base is way more stable and way more sturdy. Than, I'm not going to say it can, this, these cannons can just defend the base trade entirely. But what it can do is it can buy my probes a lot of time for me to recall my army back and lose nothing. And the Zerg takes lots of losses when I take very minimal losses to possibly no losses at all. It's really good at absorbing counter pressure. Because again, you got to keep in mind not only are, not only do we have cannon battery, which is good in itself, we also have shield upgrades, which makes it even better. And then we, as soon as we make static D, it's not like we're making static D the entire game. We're just making static D at this point now to cover my bases when I move out. Because now my now my bases, I have the point, the reason to go. I'm attacking soon. The attack is coming very soon. So if I throw down a few static D structures before I move out. I'm now suddenly a lot safer to counterattacks, and if I force a big fight to happen with my main army, I have a good chance to win, and my opponent has very low chances to kill my economy in the process. <laughs> you know what I mean? It makes your overall game plan a lot more solid. I'm not making Static D as soon as I make the base. I'm making Static D when I'm already fully saturated on max worker count, and it's gonna take very, it's like a very brief moment in time 
to where I can static D all my bases at once and go immediately back into making units. And instead of maxing out around 930, I can max out closer around like 950. 10 minutes. So it's not like it's not like a two minute deviation of my build, it's literally 20 to 30 seconds. I am here in the shadows. Because we are essentially maxed out right now. <clears throat> But yeah. Any other questions, uh, Mr. Ace Ring a Bell, Mr. Bonjois, about anything we talked about? Hopefully this helps you out, dude. I'll send you, like I said, I'll send you this file. So you can, uh, you, you, what you should look at, honestly, is you don't really have to look at your build. Look at my build and compare it to yourself. Like, from future games you play, literally do this. Watch a replay of your own, and like tomorrow or next week, and just compare your supply and your probe counts to mine that I just did for the example. And it, that, like, my Protoss, the build I just did, I could literally do this against a GM Zerg. No, no questions? Alright, sounds good. Yeah, I'll send you, I'll, I will send you this on Discord, and I will also send you the link to what everything we just talked about in a, a VOD form on YouTube. But thank you very much for buying it, dude. I appreciate it. I hope it helps you out a lot. And guys, this is going to be the end of another replay analysis. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, go check out my YouTube channel. I have many more of them posted there. And until the next video, I will see you guys later. Peace, everybody. Goodbye.